As much as I wish there was a one-stop shop solution for working with your horse and getting through obstacles and problems, unfortunately there is not. The one thing I've been learning is you can't respond to a stubborn horse the same way you would respond to an anxious horse or maybe a horse that is frustrated. Depending on how your horse is feeling and what they're communicating should determine how you respond and move forward with the training. If you're new to horses, you may find it difficult to tell exactly what your horse is feeling and then know how to go about correcting that. So so today I'm going to share everything I know about recognizing what your horse is feeling and also moving forward what you can do to make it as easy as possible for them to understand. The first type of horse I want to talk about is an anxious horse. So horses can get anxious if they're in a new environment or maybe they're working with an object they're not comfortable with, but most of all horses are going to get anxious or scared if they just don't feel confident in the situation. So that's just something to remember. A few signs you can look for to tell if your horse is anxious or scared is first their nose. Are their nostrils flared like they're trying to gather all the scents into their nose? <laughs> Also look at their eyes. Are their eyes really wide and bugging out? Because usually that's a good sign that they're a little freaked out about something. Next would be the ears. Are the ears constantly swiveling back and forth trying to sense where the danger is? That's a great sign that your horse is not confident in their surroundings. Lastly, throughout the horse's body, if they're anxious or scared and they're not feeling comfortable, they're going to be tense and stressed. So you'll be able to see that and feel that. Another thing to look for is can you physically see their heart beating? So when a horse gets it's nervous that's when their adrenaline kicks in they're like am I gonna need to run away from this situation and so oftentimes I know when Tucker gets a little nervous I'll see his heart beating right here and I'm like okay I need to do something to calm him down the last thing is usually a nervous horse or an anxious horse isn't gonna want to stand still like this so right now Tucker's just kind of chilling out but if he was anxious he would be dancing around and wanting to look around and get a look at stuff. If your horse is wanting to move their feet, that's a good sign that they're not comfortable. Now let's get hands on. What do you do if you can tell that your horse is anxious? So to demonstrate here, I brought out the tarp and you can see Tucker is not actually afraid, but this is just an example to help you see what you can do if your horse is feeling scared or anxious. So for the sake of our demonstration, let's say Tucker is scared of this tarp here and he starts dancing around, he's snorting at it, his eyes are wide and you can tell he is scared of this thing. So what do you do? So as we mentioned earlier, anxious horses like to move around. They don't feel confident just standing still. They want to move and feel like they can escape if necessary. So for me personally, the best thing I've found to do with anxious horses is to actually let them move. So if I can tell my horse is anxious, I'm not gonna try and make them stand still, whether I'm on the ground or on them. I'm gonna just let them walk around. So that way I kind of give them some comfort and confidence in the situation. The next thing I like to do is give my horse something to focus on other than what is making them anxious. So with anxious horses, they like to hyper fixate on the thing they're scared of or the thing they're focusing on. And that's because they wanna see if it really is a threat that they need to run away from. And so, by giving him something else to focus on, I'm kind of getting his mind off of the thing he's scared of or that he's worried about. So one thing I personally like to do to get the horse's mind focused elsewhere is just starting with small circles. If I can get them going in small circles, and this is whether you are on them or just on the ground. I'll just get them circling and I can move towards the hind end to get the horse to step around. I can get them to change direction. Mind you, I'm keeping this all very calm. I'm not like trying to make him move fast or do anything. I'm just trying to get him moving and focusing. So one of the ways you can get your horse focused is by getting their feet moving. That gives them something to focus on other than what they're scared of. So getting your horse moving and let them move around and do circles and change direction, that is great if you're in an environment where the horse isn't feeling comfortable because that gets them focused on what they're supposed to be doing. If it's an object that they don't feel comfortable with, like the tarp for example, one thing you can do is, I like to call it approach and retreat. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to take him over to the tarp and when I can start to tell he is feeling anxious about the situation in the object, then I can go away from the tarp. And this way you're not escalating the situation and you're also showing them that there is an escape, but it can be a calm escape. It doesn't have to be running away. Once we're at a safe distance where the horse feels confident again, I can go back over to the object, let them see it, and then we can retreat especially if it's a calm approach. 
So another thing with an anxious horse, especially if it's an object, is when they finally are comfortable to touch it or smell it, I can just let him do it and relax and he wants to kick it. <laughs> but then I can bring them away as a sign of like, okay, you did the right thing. We don't have to go any further until you're ready. And then you can just go from there. And that way, you know, you're showing your horse they have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, man. Maybe your horse is anxious and you want them to start moving their feet and getting focused, but you just don't know really what to do with that. Groundwork is a great place to start and there are certain groundwork exercises that are really helpful on just getting your horse to focus and calm down. I have an online course that covers quite a few different exercises and walks you through step by step how to do them and how to use them and so i'll put the link in the description to that course you can go to shop.equinehelper.com and it's the how to gain and maintain your horse's respect course those groundwork exercises are great for gaining your horse's respect but they're also great for just helping your horse focus let's talk about a frustrated horse a frustrated horse can be a little bit more difficult to recognize and usually these horses aren't addressed correctly which leads to further escalation of of their frustration to where they may start acting out like bucking and rearing. Another thing a frustrated horse will do is their ears are going to be listening. So they're usually turned back, not pinned back, but they'll be turned back listening to their rider or listening to whoever's working with them. They want to do the right thing usually, but they just don't know how. Something's not being communicated right to them. Another thing frustrated horses do is they tend to focus their energy elsewhere so they're not letting the stress build up in their mind. So this could look like chewing their bit or even swishing their tail. So those are just other behaviors to look for. If you're on your horse, one good sign they may be frustrated is if they're really tense or maybe they're just having a hard time going forward. I like to call that they're getting stuck. So like they're just it's almost as if they don't know what to do. Oftentimes, a horse is getting frustrated because they don't know what you want them to do. So the first place you need to start if your horse is frustrated is looking how you're communicating with them. Am I communicating in a way he understands? Because half the time, if he's getting frustrated, then I'm not, and I need to change what I'm doing. Let's say I want Tucker to walk over this tarp, and he always jumps over it. So he's getting frustrated because he's not understanding that I want him to walk over it. Let's say he's displaying all the signs we covered. Maybe he's getting stuck and doesn't want to go forward. Maybe he's chewing on his bit and swishing his tail. I'm going to remove the horse from the situation and go to something easier that I know they understand. So since I want my horse to walk over a tarp, a good place I can go to that's more basic and easier for them to understand is walking over a pole. So this way I'm giving the horse the mental break of trying to figure out what they're supposed to be doing and I'm giving them an easy solution to remind them, all right, it's not as complicated as you think. It's as simple as walking over a pole. Other easy exercises I could work on is leading my horse over a wooden plank or just leading them over any other object that they're familiar with. So once I've done the easier exercises, just to kind of remind my horse of the concept I'm looking for, I can take them back over to the object. So that's our tarp. I'll just set a small goal. So I want my horse to walk over this tarp, not jump. But he's getting frustrated because he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. So something I could start with is just getting my horse to step on the tarp. So I can let him step on the tarp. Good boy. And as soon as he steps on the tarp, I'm going to give him a big reward because he did it right. Yeah. And so once I've done that and he understands the concept, I can repeat it a few more times. But now let's say, OK, he's done one step. Let's do two steps. Let's get two feet on there. Yeah, yeah, good boy. So once I've done that a few times, then he understands what I want. He's like, oh wait, I'm supposed to walk over the tarp, not jump over it. The next behavior I wanna address is a horse that is stubborn or aggressive. So usually if you have a horse like this, you'll know it. But just to review, a stubborn horse is usually going to plant their feet. They do not want to move. They're going to stay in their ground. They're holding their position. So it's going to be hard to get them to move forward or go or do anything. Another thing they're usually going to do is pin their ears back at you and let you know that they don't like what you're doing. They don't want the situation to change. They don't want to work. So they may look at you pretty nasty and have their ears pin back on their head like that. A stubborn horse is gonna be more inclined to resist pressure. So let's say I'm trying to lead my horse 
and I'm really having to yank on them and pull to get them to go forward. They're just planting their feet there and they're like, nope, I'm not going. Another thing these horses may do to get their way is crowd you and push you around. So let's say I'm leading Tucker and he sees a patch of grass and he wants that grass. He's gonna push me out of the way and run to get it. The biggest thing I've found personally that you need to know when it comes to dealing with stubborn or aggressive horses is that you need to be urgent and assertive. So I need to address the issue as soon as it happens and I need to be urgent and assertive with my manner. That doesn't mean I need to be aggressive and beaten up on my horse, but I need to be like forward. This is how it's going to be. So a horse that's anxious or frustrated is going to need to be addressed with a more relaxed and calm and gentle manner compared to a horse that's stubborn and just trying to get their way. I'm going to be urgent and forward with them. Sometimes it can be difficult to address aggressive or stubborn behavior just because if you're more gentle and passive in nature, this kind of goes against your nature. So I just want to walk you through some things you can do with this. Our example for this one is just going to be a feed bucket. And let's say you have a horse who is stubborn about being at their feed. They're not going to be led away from their feed. They're not going to let you near their feed what you're supposed to do. One thing I want to address is it's best to correct these behaviors before they happen. So let's say you know that your horse is stubborn about their food. Instead of waiting till feed time to correct, you should work on this outside of feed time. So outside of feed time, I'm gonna work on getting my horse to move away from the empty food bucket. I can ask them to walk away and move around. I can have them come over to the food bucket and look back at it. He doesn't even wanna do that. Let's say he did want to look at the food bucket, then I'd have him move back away again and just start there. And then once your horse is confident moving away from the food bucket there, then you could add a little bit of grain. So it's not as tempting compared to a lot of grain. I'll add a little bit of grain and then I'll just ask him to move away again. And that's a good place to start outside of feeding time. As you've probably already caught on, one big part of correcting a stubborn horse or an aggressive horse is getting them to move. So the first thing I'm going to do if they're going to try that behavior with me is I'm going to communicate move. So the way you do this is I'm just going to make myself as big as possible and I'm going to walk urgently and assertive over to them. So you can even go like this and I'm just going to be big, get them to move over, move out of the way. So you may feel silly doing that. But usually a stubborn horse doesn't respect your space and they don't respect where you are. So I need to get them to notice me and get them to notice that I'm moving there, not them. So I can get big. Oh, watch out. Usually stubborn horses are lazy. They don't like to do a lot of work. So the best place to start with correcting this behavior is making them work and let them see that the wrong behavior is going to be hard to do. If my horse wants to stay at the food bucket when I'm trying to take it away and they're being aggressive to me, I can get them to move and work so that they see it's going to be harder for them to fight me than to, you know, just listen and move out of the way. And just because your horse is stubborn and you may need to handle them a little bit more assertively than an anxious horse, it doesn't mean that you're not going to reward them when they've done right. So you still want to give these horses a big reward and a big pat and a big release when they have done right so that they learn to favor that behavior. I mentioned groundwork earlier and how useful groundwork can be to getting your horse to focus and relax. It's also great for correcting horses that may be stubborn or may be displaying bad behaviors. So once again, you can check out that course I mentioned and that's linked in the description at shop.equinehelper.com and the exercises in that course will walk you through how you can use groundwork to correct a stubborn horse. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.